Well, Saddam Hussein came to power because uh, he was a member of the Ba'ath Party, which was a revolutionary Arab nationalist party. And uh, thanks to the internal politics of the Ba'ath Party, his relatives from his own tribal area became very powerful in the military bureau of the Ba'ath. And they were effectively the ones who carried out the coup d'etat in 1968, which brought the Ba'ath to power. So his cousin, Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr, became president of Iraq. And on his coattails, as it were, the young Saddam was drawn upwards. And the young Saddam had made himself very useful to Hassan al-Bakr because Hassan al-Bakr was a military officer. He could rally the troops. He could rally the officer corps. But he didn't know much about the rest of Iraq, whereas Saddam Hussein had been very effective in organizing street gangs, uh, underground networks, intelligence organizations. And so as the regime started to establish itself throughout Iraq, he became an invaluable figure. And one of the things you watch happening in the early 70s is effectively Saddam Hussein pushes himself forward and becomes, as he put it, the strong man of Iraq, although he wasn't effectively the president of Iraq. He doesn't become president of Iraq until uh, 1979 when he persuades uh, his cousin uh, that ill health has now prevented him from pursuing his career as president of Iraq and pushes him aside. Uh, but of course, uh, it was because he himself felt he had enough strength to effectively displace his cousin and become president directly. And so Saddam Hussein works his way up through, if you like, the politics of conspiracy, but also through the military politics, which were very characteristic of Iraq, and finds himself as president of Iraq in 1979.